Hey guys, I'm in the backseat of the Bentley today. I want to talk about how it's been over a year since I accepted the challenge, the imaginary challenge thrown down by Doug DeMiro about the dangers, the financial pitfalls of owning a Bentley Arnage that's well over a decade old and frightfully out of warranty. Despite the warnings of friends, family, a mechanic, urban legends, and countless internet commenters, I decided to take the plunge. With no regard for my middle class income status, I purchased this immensely depreciated 2004 Bentley Arnage T in the late summer of 2016. This would be one of the most life altering decisions I've ever made. First, let's discuss the vulgar matter of the expenses. Now, when new, this car cost more than $250,000. Fortunately for me, old man depreciation waved his magic wand and 12 years later, the car's value was in reach of a mere mortal such as myself. I purchased this Bentley Arnage with less than 30,000 miles on the odometer for just under $50,000 all in, tax, title, license, and delivery. So since I was able to afford the initial entry fee into the Bentley Ownership Club, the next big hurdle was ongoing maintenance and repairs. It's been over a year, but I'm happy to say repair and maintenance costs have been surprisingly less than most YouTube commenters think. To date, I've only had two unscheduled trips to my local Bentley specialist. The first visit was for a low coolant light on the dashboard. I took the car to the shop to make sure there were no leaks or major issues because I planned to take the car on a 500 mile road trip the following week. After a brief investigation by my Bentley expert, it was determined that the low coolant light was due to <clears throat> low coolant. There were no leaks, no problems, and it received a clean bill of health. I also went ahead and did an oil change and coolant flush and got some miscellaneous parts while I was there. All in, this trip set me back about $500. The second unscheduled visit to the specialist was for a rough idle that triggered a dreadful check engine light. The mechanic ran a diagnostic scan and determined that the engine was running rich, or it might have been lean. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I was too nervous about how much it was going to cost to fix. His solution? run a bottle of seafoam through the gas tank. Amazingly, not only did that fix the rough idle, but the car ran smoother than the day it arrived. The problem could have been due to moisture in the fuel system or dirty sensor. The Bentley specialist cleared the fault code and the check engine light hasn't been on since. The bill was for one hour of labor plus the can of fuel cleaner. Other than these two shop visits, all other maintenance and repair items have been affordable DIY projects, all wonderfully documented on my YouTube channel using parts easily sourced from Bentley Rolls Royce specialist shops online. I've replaced the car's pollen filters and cabin filters for under a hundred bucks. A dealership would charge over $700 for that exact same project. After getting a bit more confidence, I even managed to repair a faulty coolant level sensor for less than $150. And you can check out the videos for all of these maintenance items. So for all you mathletes out there, the total maintenance and repair costs on this car haven't even topped $1,000. That's on par with my 2006 Infiniti M45, which needs about a grand's worth of maintenance right now. I do have a couple expensive maintenance items on the horizon that will put the Bentley back in the specialist garage, but many of the Arnage owners that I've met along this journey have assured me that these two are also viable DIY projects. So since we've established that this car hasn't yet ruined me financially, let's talk about some of the positive aspects about owning this car. Yes, it's fun, luxurious, powerful, and exciting, but this car is about a lifestyle experience. The excitement doesn't stop once you shut the key off. This car gives you a presence whenever you arrive at your destination. Sure, we car guys know it's the same price of a nicely equipped Lexus ES350, but the rest of the world is convinced that somebody important is probably behind the wheel. But it's just me. This brings me to the first aspect of the Bentley lifestyle that I've adopted. This car is a confidence booster. In the initial months of ownership, I made the comment that I felt like an imposter when I was driving this car. This car was intended for the super rich, and today it still carries that vibe. But my salary is comparable to what the super rich probably spend on pool maintenance. It was never my intention to buy a car to portray some image of success. I just wanted a truly exceptional automobile. I mean, what car guy doesn't want 450 horsepower and 645 foot-pounds of torque? But somewhere along the way, the lines of fantasy and reality started to blur. Don't worry, I haven't become a jerk or anything. My initial explanation for this newfound confidence was that maybe people were thinking that I was important because I was driving this car. But on the other side of that argument, people could also be thinking I'm a greedy, no good, one percenter jerk. So that wouldn't be very confidence inspiring. This train of thought, trying to guess what other people were thinking, became exhausting. Once I stopped trying to guess people's assumptions, good or bad, I started to enjoy the experience more. This eventual 
I don't care what you think mindset has led to a more confident and a more enjoyable experience. Another example of the Bentley lifestyle that I've adopted is the VIP valet experience. Now I know there's a divide among car guys whether valet is good or bad, but I am now strongly and deeply entrenched into the camp that valet is good. Even though the car is well over a decade old, it still commands a presence in front of a hotel or restaurant, even when parked next to the latest from BMW or Mercedes-Benz. It only took a couple visits to my new favorite restaurant before the valet attendant started to greet me by name. The next time you want to impress a date, a boss, a future father-in-law, pull up to a nice restaurant in your Bentley Arnage and have the valet greet you with, Welcome back, Mr. Kryzak. I had to struggle to keep my cool the first time that happened, and it continues to happen. Perhaps the most unforeseen and damaging expense of my Bentley ownership is the increase to my dining out budget. The VIP treatment is so addictive, but so worth it. Maybe this car still has the potential to ruin me financially, but in a way I never expected. Another nice factor of the Bentley experience is exclusivity. Sightings on the road are rare. It recently dawned on me that before purchasing the car, I've only seen this car one time in the wild. As an avid car watcher, that's a pretty stunning admission. Now, I've seen more examples of the modern Ferrari LaFerrari on the road than the well-aged Bentley Arnage or her stablemate, the Rolls-Royce Silver Seraph. This exclusivity does have a downside, though. The online Arnage community is not as robust compared to other auto enthusiast groups, but I predict this will change as the Arnage continues to depreciate and falls into the hands of more enthusiasts who enjoy wrenching their own cars. Without a doubt, purchasing this Arnage has been one of the most exciting and rewarding things I have ever done, and I'm not ready to give it up yet. Recently, while sitting at a red light, a Chrysler 300 crossed the intersection, and my preschool-aged child made this comment. That looks like a bear. So clearly, I still have a lot of teaching to do. The Bentley Arnage has proven itself capable, reliable, and far less expensive to maintain than Legend warns. It has also been more immensely fun than I ever imagined in some of the most unpredictable ways. When it comes to luxury, style, and yes, even practicality, I'm convinced the Bentley Arnage is one of the best kept secrets in the automotive world. For these reasons, I'm doubling down on this gamble and I'm going to keep the Arnage in my garage for another year. It's time to see what year two has in store. Will the big one finally hit? That catastrophic mechanical breakdown that's destined to financially ruin me? I'm betting no. The days of letting irrational fear spurred on by exaggeration and misinformation are in the past. We shouldn't let this fear cripple us from driving the cars we are passionate about. And I'll set out to prove this again in year two. guys enjoyed the video and the update be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already I've got some more videos coming out and I'm gonna answer some questions that I get about does the Bentley Arnage attract women and I've also got the buyer's guide coming out soon so subscribe for that if you want to see any of the how-to's check them out on the channel thanks for watching give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one